worship. We thank you for your presence all over the world, all over this country. Oh God, I'm covering over the New Hope family now and every family of faith gathered and scattered abroad. Now, Lord, we ask your presence in this place that we go forth from this place throughout the highways and byways, each home, each room, to each family. Meet their need. Heal right now. Give strength right now. Cover right now. Deliver right now. Set free right now is our prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Good morning, church. It is a blessed privilege and honor to have this opportunity to share the word of God with you, especially to the New Hope family and to all of our family and friends across Facebook and the internet. We are uh, scattered as a church, but we're still one as a family. And we uh, thank God to, to have this opportunity. I want to say to you, First and foremost, everything is going to be all right. Don't you worry about a thing. Everything is going to be all right. And it is our prayer that through this message today, that you will find strength in this time. I do believe that the power of God is real. I do believe that God knows what he's doing. Yeah. And I trust in God at the time like this. And I pray that you'll find strength and peace. Through today's message, found out of 2 Chronicles chapter 20. 2 Chronicles chapter 20. 2 Chronicles chapter 20, verse 12. This is the word of God. Oh, our God, will you not judge them? For we have no might against this great company that comes against us. Neither know we what to do, but our eyes are upon thee. We have no might against this great company. Neither know we what to do but our eyes are upon thee. I want to talk about simply what to do when you don't know what to do. What to do when you don't know what to do. Our gadgets, our consumer products, electronics, and other products that we buy often come with a handbook, often come with an instruction manual. And two basic things happen with a handbook or instruction manual. Most of the time, no matter the product, we either put the handbook up and never ever refer to it again, or we simply throw it away. Yeah. I heard someone recently say that they wish that this coronavirus came with a handbook on how to deal with it. Someone once coined the phrase, I wish life came with a handbook. I want to, yes Lord, declare to you today that life did come with a handbook. There is a manual on how to handle the coronavirus and it's right here. It's the word of God. But just like our normal handbooks of life, we treat the Bible the same way. We either tuck it away to never use it or some people simply dismiss it and throw it away in their minds. And we see that same thing happening. God's people ignoring the handbook while the world is throwing the handbook away. But I want to suggest to you today by this message that God is going to show us in his word that he has the instruction. He has a guideline. He has the corona protocol. He has the protocols of problems in our life right here written in the word of God, especially this one single solitary scripture that I read for you today, 
this prayer by King Jehoshaphat. Throughout the Bible, there are many, many canonical heroes, people of faith that prayed great prayers. There are prayers of Moses and prayers of David. There's prayers of Jeremiah. There's prayers of Elijah. There are prayers of, of so many canonical heroes, even the, the model prayer, which is our prayer, or Jesus' prayer in John 17, or that great prayer, the prayer of Jabez. I want to show you, brothers and sisters, the blessing and studying different prayers in Scripture. And if you look at this prayer that I read before you, you'll see a prayer that is prayed by King Jehoshaphat, King of Judah, out of distress and desperation. This prayer I just prayed for you is a is a SOS. It's a it's a prayer of distress. It's a Lord, things have gotten so bad that that He confesses, I do not know what to do. And I understand why He's praying this prayer. You got to read a little bit. Uh, I would tell you to go home and read it, but you're already home. So later on in the day, if you haven't had a chance. Read Second Chronicles 17 and 18 and 19 and 20 and 21 to get a whole uh, hand around what this story really means. It begins with the nation of Israel, a sister nation to Judah. Uh, this is after the northern kingdom and southern kingdoms have split and Israel, King Ahab reigns over them and Jehoshaphat reigns over uh, the kingdom of Judah. The Bible says that King Ahab asked for a diplomatic celebration because Jehoshaphat had married into Ahab's family as a sign to unify the nations. They had a great feast. You ought to read it. It sounds like a, a lamb chop or lamb shank barbecue festival that they're having. And they, they feed all the people and they gather together all the diplomats and magistrates and Ahab host King Jehoshaphat in Syria. But if you read the Bible carefully, you understand that Ahab really has an ulterior motive. He does not want to celebrate the union of the nations, but he's really trying to convince Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, to join Israel to fight the Moabites, the Ammonites, and the Assyrians in a valley called Ramoth Gilead. And let me pause here and say, parenthetically, be careful about invitations you accept. Not every invitation means you're well. People not invite you over because they want to have a good time. Sometimes they're trying to get you to do things that you really don't need to do. And so he, he pulls the wool over Jehoshaphat's eye and asks him, in the middle of this celebration, now that you're here, will you join me? to fight the Moabites, the Ammonites, and the Assyrians in Ramoth Gilead. Jehoshaphat said, they have, he said, let's see what God has to say. Thank God for kings. Thank God for leaders that before they make decisions, they see what the Lord has to say. And they have went and got 400 prophets and lined them before that temporary Oval Office and ask them, shall I go to Ramoth Gilead? And all 400 of the prophets said, go, and the Lord will be with you. Jehoshaphat said, wait a minute, I ain't never been nowhere where 400 preachers agree. He said, there has to be somebody else. Do you have another prophet somewhere in Israel? Yeah, Ahab said, yeah, I, I got one, but he's in prison. He said, why is he in prison? Because I locked him up. Well, why'd you lock him up? Because he never, ever, ever prophesies in my favor. Every time he preaches, it's doom and gloom. And believe me, there's some people that still get upset when the preacher don't tell them what they want to hear. Yes, Lord. He still get upset at the preacher. So he locked the preacher up. And Jehoshaphat said, wait a minute. You mean to tell me he never agrees with you? He said, yeah, go get him. They went to go get this young prophet by the name of Micaiah. And it's kind of comical when you read it while he's on his way uh, to see the kings, the two kings. Somebody warns Micaiah and said, wait a minute, before you go in here, let me give you a heads up. All the prophets said to go ahead and go to war with the Moabites, the Ammonites, and Syria. So why don't you just go ahead and play along? 
Hezekiah said, as the Lord lives, I'm going to say what the Lord has for me to say. And he gets up in front of Ahab, and Ahab and Jehoshaphat asked him, shall we go to reign in Gilead? And Hezekiah said, go, go, and the Lord will be with you. And Ahab said, wait a minute, hold on, something wrong here. You never, ever prophesied in my faith. Tell me the truth. He said, all right, since you want the real prophecy, here it is. God says, I saw Israel scattered as sheep without a shepherd. They have said, didn't I tell you, I told you, you don't prophesy in my favor. And the Bible said that they beat Micaiah and put him back in the prison. And despite what Micaiah said, Ahab and Jehoshaphat went to war with the enemy. Ahab a sneak fellow. He tells Jehoshaphat, why don't you put my robe on? And, and you, you act like the king, because I want to go out there and fight on the front line. But, but really, Ahab knew that they were not so much after Israel, but after him. And they knew if he put the, the, his garments on Jehoshaphat, that they would think that he was Ahab. And sure enough, in the midst of the battle, the people, the enemies came on Jehoshaphat, and he cried out. He said, I'm not Ahab. And the Lord revealed to them that he was indeed Jehoshaphat. Meanwhile, Ahab is fighting on the front line. And in the heat of the battle, would you believe such a thing would happen? It's true, it's in the scripture. The Bible says some soldier out of nowhere took a bow, an arrow, and the Bible used the word said per adventure, which means at absolutely nothing, shot that arrow up in the air, aiming at nothing. That arrow went in the air, came down and hit Ahab right in the neck in between his helmet and his arm. He fell injured. They put him on the sideline and there Ahab, out of disobedience, had to sit there and watch the army of Israel fall as he later on died that evening. You know what happened. When Israel fell, the Moabites, the Ammonites, and the Assyrians gathered together to go against the kingdom of Judah. And there is Jehoshaphat seeing the armies come. He fortresses himself in and he gets himself and his magistrates and he sees what's happening and he assesses the situation. He knows he's outnumbered. He knows he's outmanned. He knows he's cornered in, he's fenced in and it looks like it's the end and he does not call for a meeting with the Joint Chiefs of Staff. He does not call the Secretary of Defense. He does not call the Secretary of State. He's not calling for a military strategy meeting. This is what Jehoshaphat does. He goes to God in prayer. And when he goes to God in prayer, this is the prayer that he prays. Lord, will you not judge them? For we have no might against this great company. Neither do we know what to do, but my eyes are on you. Brothers and sisters, I've got a word for you. The, the irony of this prayer is that while Jehoshaphat is confessing that he does not know what to do, he's actually doing the very thing he ought to do when he doesn't know what to do. And brothers and sisters, when you don't know what to do, do what Jehoshaphat did. He does the very thing he ought to do when he doesn't know what to do. Here he is. Go to God. That's all I can get to tell you. When you don't know what to do, go to God about it. I, I, I really wish I, I really wish I had time to preach this today because you do understand people really don't know right now what to do. Government, they're making all kinds of decisions, doing this, doing that, but really, they don't know what to do. The health professionals, the medicine, they, they knew what to do, they have a cure by now, they have a vaccine, but really, they don't know what to do. Our elected officials, they, they just seem to be doing the best they can and they're trying to keep us safe and God bless them. Let's pray for them, but really, they don't know what to do. And I know pastors, we, we're smiling and we're, we're, we're being strong and we're praying. But in fact, we really don't know what to do. Matter of fact, you're sitting at home watching Facebook. Yes, Lord, you, you really don't know what to do. But guess what? While you don't know what to do, right now you're doing the very thing 
you. You ought to do when you don't know what to do. You're hearing a word from the Lord. And I wish I could tell everybody, if you don't know what to do, go to God. Mr. President, go to God. Governor Murphy, go to God. Last Baraka, go to God. Pastors, go to God. Baptists, go to God. Methodists, go to God. Holiness, go to God. Covid, go to God. Wherever you are, if you don't know what to do, go to God. That's right. I believe you hear what I'm saying. Let me back that up with somebody. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and what? Pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven. Give their sin and heal their land. He said, let me, let me pray this prayer. He said, Lord, I'm coming to you because I don't know what to do. And look how he opens his prayer. He said, Lord, will you not judge them? In this prayer, it gives an indication of why Jehoshaphat is confident in going to God. And by saying this, Lord, will you not judge them? That's another way of saying, God, you can handle my enemies however you want to, whenever you want to. That's another way of saying, God, I know things look bad, but you are still in control. Please listen to me, church. I know things look pretty bad. But God is still in control. Oh, uh, did you notice before uh, this coronavirus, the economy was in control? Yeah. Oh, before this violent Congress, so scared of the president, they didn't want to challenge him on anything because they thought the president was in control. Yeah. The people on your job thought they were in control. The, the people in our neighborhoods, they thought they were in control. But one thing, Yes, Lord, this coronavirus has shown is the only person that has the power is God and God alone. God is in control. Then he said, because you can judge it, Lord, you know how to handle this. Let me tell you something. This may be out of man's hand, but it's never out of God's hands. This may have surprised us, but it did not sneak up on God. God is in control. God knows how to handle it. Why? Because he knows what to do. God knows what to do. Can I tell you how I know? You know, the Bible says he's numbered the hairs on our head, which means he has complete detail in our biological and anatomical and physiological makeup. He knows about bacteria. He knows about pathogens. He knows about antigens. He knows about atoms. He knows about molecules. He knows about cells. He made our bodies. Surely he can fix our bodies. God is in control. God in control. Next thing he does is he confesses his inability to handle his own situation. He says, God, you can judge them, for we have no might against this great company. They come up against us. Let me tell you about Jehoshaphat. He's the king, but he knows how to submit. He's the king, but he knows how to be humble. He's a, he, he has the power and authority, but he knows how to submit that authority to a greater power than you. Oh, if we had people with authority, yeah. people, yes, or with, with influence, who could use that influence and be humble enough to confess, I cannot handle this without God. And I'm going to tell you, brothers and sisters, the reason why you're panicking, the reason why you're fearful, you're trying to do this without God. You're trying to handle this without God. You need to be humble enough to submit and say, listen, I don't have the answers. I don't have the strength, but I know who does have the answer. And I know who does. I need to go to God about it. Oh, yeah. He said, watch this. Lord, we have no faith. Again, I love the prayer. Against this great company. Neither know me what to do. Watch this. Here he is. But our eyes, but our eyes are upon me. He said, Lord, we don't know what to do. But our eyes, that, that word conjunction, but means I, I'm about to tell you something that, that's true.
because I already told you something that's true. But what I'm getting ready to tell you supersedes what I already told you. That's what the word but me. He said, he said, what I already told you is true, but what I'm getting ready to tell you supersedes what I already told you. Let me tell you what I already told you. I can't handle this situation. But I'm getting ready to tell you this. My eyes are upon you. Which is saying the Lord, even though I'm confessing that I can't do it, what's more important than that, I know you can. He said, I'm keeping my eyes on you. How are we going to make it through this new hope? we got to keep our eyes on the Lord. Stop looking at negativity. Stop looking at conspiracy. Stop looking at people who are talking and ain't saying nothing. Keep your eyes on God. He says, my eyes on you. Bible says that God answered prayer. Oh Lord, I can shout right there. Tell somebody if you need them, call them. God answers prayer. Oh, I wish I could come right to you. I'd shake your hand. Even though they tell us not to shake your hand, I'd shake your hand. I'd even hug you if I could and tell you Jesus is on the main line. Tell him what you want. The line never busy. Tell him what you want. He'll come in a hurry. Call it up. Tell him what you want. The Bible says God answered the prayer. He said, go tell Jehoshaphat. Thus says the Lord. Tell Jehoshaphat that God has heard his prayer. Tell Jehoshaphat that God said, go ahead to Ramoth Gilead and go ahead and fight against the Moabites, the Ammonites, and the Syrians. But this time, don't go there the way you usually go. Yes, uh, Don't fight the way you normally fight. I know when you normally go to battle, you get in battle formation. But uh, this time, I don't want uh, you to put the bow and arrow on the front line. No, I don't want you to put the catapult on the front line. No, I don't want you to put the uh, no, uh, the sword and shield on the front line. But this is what he said, King. This is what God said. Go find the worshipers. And go find the praisers. And go find the dancers. And Put them on the front line. Yeah, for you don't need to fight your battle. He said, tell the king, the battle is not yours, but it's the Lord. Tell the king, there is no pain that Jesus can feel. Yeah, tell the king there is no hurt that he cannot heal. Ooh, for all things work together according to the master's purpose and his holy will. The 
Moabites and the Ammonites and the Assyrian got before them. The Bible said that God's people started to praise him. They started to sing and they started to shout. They started to dance and they started to worship. Y'all know what happened when the enemy saw them praising in the midst of their trouble. They got confused and they got so confused the Moabites turned on the Ammonites. The Ammonites turned on the Assyrians. The Assyrians turned on the Moabites and they defeated each other in their hour of distress. That's all I want to tell you. You got to learn how to fight through your praise. It's praise time. How are we going to make it? We got to pray to the Lord. Mama, it's praise time. Grandmother, it's praise time. Grandfather, father, sister, brother, child, it's praise time. Pray to him. I will bless the Lord at all. God bless you.